Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. This is the Africa Study Bible, God's Word Through African Eyes. A lot there. Now, it's in the NLT, and I think this particular study Bible only comes in the NLT published by Tyndale. We'll look at when it came out and that type of thing. But, uh, you know, a lot of people miss the influence of Africa in Scripture. Um, that Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Um, the person who carried the cross from Jesus was Simon of Cyrene of Africa. The nation of Israel was hundreds of years in Africa. Ethiopia, the Bible says, shall stretch out her hands to God. So a lot of things. The first missionary journey was in a prayer meeting. One of the people was there. Multiple people from Africa. One is Simon Niger. You know. Um, and so a lot of things. And Christianity was predominant in Africa for a long time. And is becoming predominant today the 1040 window there are countries in Africa that are majority Christian Pentecostals are being elected to the presidency of these countries now I know you may not believe me watch for those countries to be blessed because they're living by scripture and living by Christianity it's got nothing to do with anybody's color of their skin their geographics where they're born none of that no DNA no bell curves none of those things exist they don't um, but what exists we're all of one blood one DNA one Jesus shed his blood for everybody it's our people living by scripture and if you're living by scripture you get blessed people say, oh, I believe in that white superior yeah well go go look at some of the pagans in northern Germany in the uh, you know, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th century, and the Gauls, and the Vandals, and the Goths, and all these people. I mean, these people, I mean, the, the, the Picts in Scotland, that's where we get the term picture. I mean, they're tattooing themselves. They're just, they're savages, you know what I'm saying, before Jesus gets to them. <laughs> And so it's got nothing at all to do with, with uh, ethnicity and race and color. It's got everything to do with Jesus. And so in Africa, when they follow, and in South America, when they follow the precepts of Scripture, God's going to bless them. And when they turn their backs on, I mean, Jesus was a Jew. But when the Jews turned their back on Jesus, God, they went into captivity. Bad things happened. And so that's what it's all about. And so uh, you open it up. It's got a little, I'll just show you in here, presentation page. So because, see, Christianity, and this is one thing that people that maybe sometimes from a, a Marxist viewpoint and things miss, is Christianity, they call it the white man's religion. All this. And all of that's always been wrong. I mean, it's a Jewish religion. It's anything. It's the ancient Near East, you know, and this type thing. Um but that the majority of Christians today, the majority are Asian and African and Central and South American. And this is where Christianity is blossoming and booming. And thousands of people a day are getting the Holy Ghost and getting baptized in Jesus' name. It is there. So, just showing you some things here. So obviously Israel is much closer to Africa than it is to the United States or Europe, unless you count Turkey as part of Europe, and many people would. But uh, I was reading about this artwork as well, but I had done it so long ago, I wish I could tell you more about the artwork. I had intended to when I did this, but it's a long story. Um, we're going to see if it said something on the back. But it does have over 350 contributors. You know, when we did the Premier Study Bible, it was done with the understanding that it was going to be used in missions in Africa. Over 2,000 copies of the initial print run of 10,000, of which we're desperately trying to get another print run done because we're just about out if we're not out. And that thing's getting in... Christian bookstores. It's just getting there. I just got another report. And uh, 
me just show you this. This is so beautiful. Um, and so over 2,000 of them came with what we call the Africa insert in the front showing African contribution. But I mean, people forget people like Tortillian, Sibelius was from Libya. He was known as Sibelius the Libyan. Um, and I mean, that's just what it is. So tons of, of things from African scholars. So um, copyright 212, 215, 216, Oasis International Limited. Uh, visit our webpage, africastudybible.com. Livingstone, who did the Premier Study Bible, also helped them with this as well. So here's what's in here. We'll just start showing you that. Great Study Bible. You know, it's just kind of weird. People tend to, what is it, the old saying, birds of a feather flock together. People tend to be so jaundiced in their views. I do think like the internet is breaking down a lot of walls. People can see cultures. People see that people are people. We're all in the image of God. And I could see where in the days before electricity and all that, I mean, if you, if you, most people, believe it or not, in the U.S., the, when it was a rural society 150 years ago, most people never traveled much over 20 miles from where they were born. And so, I mean, you just always saw people that looked like you and had your accent. And if you were in the South, a Yankee came down, you thought they were weird. They thought Southerns were weird. And so people, but all that's kind of just fading away. And that's kind of a really good thing. List of contributors. And I know I'm going fast. I apologize for that. Now, it does look like it has a glued binding. Sometimes they're glued and sewn. Just wanted to mention that. Um, you still want to break in a Bible, maybe not quite as aggressively when it's in hardback. One good thing about hardback is um, like the sun doesn't affect it nearly as, as bad. Um, but at the same time, the reason hardbacks go bad is pages fall out. So, so it's got a little section of understanding applying the Old Testament today. So you still want to do something like this, you know. And even though it opens very great, I'll show you this, in Genesis, I mean, it opens flat, which is usually an indication of Smythe's own, but not always. Boy, I, and I can just see Livingstone's handiwork with this because they're, those guys, Veerman and... Bruce Barton, they were Ravi Zacharias's. Bruce was Ravi's uh, faculty student advisor at TED's. But I mean, it just has that look. Even though the the life application, they did the life application by side column, but the center the columns really good. But the maps, the in-text maps, I love in-text maps that as you move in the narrative, it moves with you and lets you see where you're at. So let's look at the theological perspective. Another amazing thing that's happening with Christianity, some people have turned sociologists, the browning of Christianity and this type of thing. But one thing that's happened is it tends to be far more conservative than a lot of Western Christianity. And so like the Methodist church and the Anglican church would try to go in certain directions. And it was a lot of the people, converts from the developing world that were like, wait a second, that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> it would bring it back to a more biblical thing. We're just going to see if we can get a kind of a feel for how this is, the, the theological bent of the notes. Author, according to Jewish tradition, Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Date, many sections were probably recorded directly by Moses during the Exodus. Some scholars date the Exodus around 1445, others to the 1200s. You know, so that's a little bit, it's modern day uh, evangelicalism, but it is definitely not <laughs> conservative theology. The Hegelian dialectic, the shifting of things from one place to another happens. And so what used to be ultra liberal is now conservative. That's kind of just weird. And sometimes the circle goes all the way around. I've noticed reading certain things, you know, like Ron Paul or something libertarian, uh, really a staunch libertarian, will occasionally run into the uh, ultra left, you know, the anarchist left or something. 
the anarcho-capitalism. Um, we worship the God of creation. Only the best will do. It does have quite a bit of bleed through. Let's see if we can see the print size in this thing. I will say the center column reference is fantastic. Extremely well done and easy to use. Center column references can be this Babylon sometimes of difficulty to read. Yeah, it does look like it is only eight point print, which is like certain types of gift award Bibles. That's not good. But center column reference is fantastic. And there's not a ton of notes, you'll notice just not a lot of notes let's go to the introduction of exodus see what we can get to there as well not a lot of room to write maybe at the top maybe at the bottom not on the right it looks like a quarter inch margin and maybe a half inch margin does have room to write in the gutter and it is this is genesis 36 it's staying open so that's good. So caring for God's creation. Okay, the book of Exodus. Yeah, but this is a real thing, you know, that Christianity is taking over Africa in a large degree. And taking over Central and South America and taking over large swaths of Asia. But not just there. Pakistan is having one of the greatest revivals in human history right now. People don't realize that. Venezuela, Iran is having some revival. A lot of persecution. Nobody says there's no persecution. There he is. Persecution. But that's really neat. The, like Africa and South America, Central America, they're actually sending uh, missionaries to the West. And I'll just tell you, we need them. <laughs> we sent them all over the world for years. We need them. We need Holy Ghost apostolic revival. People that just believe the Bible, the simple truths of the Bible. You can overthink the Bible. I mean, it's so simple. The simplicity of the gospel, but where less anybody you know, take you away from the simplicity which is in Christ. So again, there's not notes on every page. It's not going to be like the, you know, Bible study I like is King James Study Bible. But uh, it's going to have quite a few. Um, let's see if it's got anything between Malachi and Matthew. A lot of times your best notes are there. Similarities between the cultures of the Bible and Africa. Obviously a lot of similarities. I've been to Israel and I've been to Africa. I've been to Kenya and missions trips uh, in Kenya. Uh, Israel wasn't so much a missions trip. Did a few things there. It was a great trip. Sister paid for it. Dad went. He was 80. It was for his 80th birthday present. So uh, it was a miracle of the Lord I was able to go. I'm grateful. But I could see similarities definite similarities there it is not red letter I'll show you what new testament looks like and then we'll get to the back because i do think it's got quite a bit in the back so to this point basic study bible similar i would say to a schofield a little better introductions in schofield maybe a tad more notes in the schofield maybe like a ryrie a little bit but let's see what it's got in the back Book of Ephesians. I have seen people convert to Jesus' name Christianity that, uh, let me just show you, this is great in Revelation, um, where they had to go in the streets. That there were missions organizations from multiple religions that if they converted to apostolic Christianity, they had to move out of their housing project and lost their dollar day stipend, and they chose to live for Jesus. They said, well, we'd rather live for Jesus. Not saying the other, but it, but in the fullness. But I mean, this I've got to study this. This is emperors of Rome. This is great information. Um, narrative of the history of Christianity in Africa. Resources for learning and teaching. Narrative of God's timeline and work in Africa. We'll take you through a few of these pages. 
So just a great Bible. It's not real big. It's, uh, I would say, eminently carryable. And it does come, you know, I buy it in hardback because I have to buy it and, and save funds. You know, we, uh, the Lord's got all the money, but we don't have all the money. And we have, we support missionaries, home foreign missionaries. We, we support uh, the work of the Lord here. We have to do work in Albany in the surrounding area. So you're seeing a little bit of the study helps that it's got quite a few but it does come in a variety of uh, of uh, backings now you might say well what if I you know have no relation to Africa you know now some people would say all of us do because they would say the first people you know the leakies would say the first people came from Africa and all that I would say probably not I would say Adam and Eve probably the Garden of Eden was not in Africa but uh, I'd say you still learn from it uh, biblical truth is biblical truth it may have an emphasis of that also you may want to study kind of break out of whatever mindset you're in and begin to see things because I was going to say earlier you know some things like uh, uh, you know if you read the Song of Solomon it's very clear Solomon is like Snow White and not Snow White the Disney carrier but the uh, color and that the Shulamite woman is not you know and so you just have to or Ma Moses marrying an Ethiopian woman and so it really uh, breaks down stereotypes and stuff when you just read the scripture and don't read it through your cultural lens but read it through the biblical lens and what God, God's word is transchronological and transcultural. It's for all cultures and all people for all time. And, you know, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So this is the great study Bible. Let's just face it. Got all kinds of Christian kings in Africa. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like Ethiopia is this Christian kingdom for years indexes of charts and stuff so here's a topical index concordance that that's really good it's not just a concordance but it is a topical index also that has in text maps let's see if it's got any maps in uh, the back yeah it does not a lot it does. It, this looks. It almost looks like Holman's basic maps. Oh, wow. Copyright. No, it's Tyndale's. Madagascar. Madagascar is having one of the greatest revivals in human history right now. But uh, people forget when the Islamic conquest went through North Africa. I mean, you study history, it was Christian blood was being shed. Tripoli and all these places. You, know, you just had Islam go back into the Hagia Sophia. Now what I'm going to do, so you can get a little more information by this, I'm going to have Sister Francesca zoom in on this while I'm measuring it. We're not going to do where you see the measuring. We're just going to let her do that. Nine and a half by six and a quarter it looks like by two inches thick which is not bad at all I'll compare it to my text only King James so it's, it's bigger but obviously going to have more notes smaller print I'll show you the difference in the thickness as well so I mean if you got any type of racism you need to get rid of it you know we're all when we see Jesus we'll be like him uh, it's gonna be people from every tribe and tub in heaven you know so you might as well get used to it down here I remember MLK said Martin Luther King said the most segregated time in America is 10 o'clock on Sunday morning shouldn't be let's live for Jesus so God bless talk with you later in Jesus name